Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's present at the feast. Today we celebrate the transfiguration of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when he was, as we heard in the gospel, that he went up onto the uh, top of Mount Tabor, which is a big kind of volcanic type cone mountain in, uh, uh, in Palestine in which where he was transfigured before his own disciples, where he became radiant with the uncreated light. And they saw his glory and they were afraid. And they saw Moses and Elijah standing with him. Now there's many aspects to this. And then also have to also uh, remember also that he uh, that there appeared this voice from a from a cloud saying this is my beloved son whom I am more pleased. What we have here is, is a, uh, a theophany, a, a revelation of God, in which Jesus reveals his divinity to his disciples. But he opens the eyes of their hearts, he opens their spiritual eyes, he opens their noetic eyes, so that they can see him as he is, so that they can see the the reality of his divinity shining through his humanity. But in doing so, he also reveals the full potential of human nature, of what we will be, because we also will shine with that same radiance of divine grace. Jesus reveals himself as he will be seen at the second coming. He reveals himself as he will be at, with, at, with the Father as the light of the kingdom of God, which has no lamps, but radiant. He reveals himself as he will be sitting on that, on that white horse, coming with the hosts of heaven radiant with light, overcoming the kingdom of darkness. It's an eschatological sign. It's a sign of the end. It's a sign of it's the sign of that of that coming of Christ who overthrows and uh, the devil and, and and binds death and Hades. Moses and Elijah were with him. Moses, the giver of the law, Elijah, the greatest of the prophets, both of whom had theophanies, both of whom had seen God. And if, and if you listened to Vespers last yesterday afternoon, we heard the accounts of God appearing both to Moses and to Elijah in the readings. And in appearing, God did not show his, his face. God did not show his form. To Elijah, he, he spoke not in, the, not in the clap of thunder, not in a, you know, not with the uh, trumpet sound, but a still, small voice in the wind. To Moses, he revealed a little more of himself and Moses saw his back parts, whatever that means, in the radiant cloud of his glory. Because that's what the cloud means. The God appearing in a cloud means in the cloud of his glory. But it's also an image from the temple of the priest being emerging from, emerging from the holy, holy, holy of Holies in a cloud of incense. Moses was transfigured, though that transfiguration waned after having encountered God in the cloud on top of the mountain. Elijah was taken up to heaven 
in a fiery chariot. Moses and Elijah. Elijah who never died. Moses died in the wilderness. And thus, the law and the prophets, the living and the dead, those living eternally in heaven who have never died like Elijah, those who had died but are living like Moses, together with the apostles who are living, was the substance of that theophany. And the apostles saw his form because he had taken the, that, that human form he had become human to reveal God to man so that man could relate to God, so that man could begin to grasp God, to understand God's mercy, God's love, God's compassion. But also to show man the radiance of the divinity, that same radiance to which we are called. So as we celebrate the transfiguration, let us contemplate this light of the revelation of the glory of God shining forth in the face of our Lord Jesus Christ and shining forth in our own hearts that he too might count us worthy of that same vision either in this life or in the life to come of himself transfigured in glory. Because that requires also that our, that our souls, our minds, our hearts, and our bodies be also so uh, permeated, penetrated with grace that we also are transfigured with that same glory, that glory which he came to share with us, which he had with the Father before us.